Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. Jesus God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for salvation that you have made available to us. We ask now that you bless us each, every person on this call, those who will be coming, those who will be participating by way of our webpage, etc. Just bless now your word, O oh God. And we claim even right now our families back for God. We claim right now in the name of Jesus every church, every ministry that will accept the responsibility to pray for a particular nation in the world. And we thank you now for each and every person you've allowed to join us at this hour. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. And thanks be to God. Uh, today, we want to talk about reclaiming our homes, our children, and our families for God by making sure, by making sure that every member of the household has accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and that they know and have embraced their spiritual gift. That's one of the goals that ought to be for the head of the household whether you are a father, whether you are a mother, whether you're a grandparent, whether your uncle, your aunt, your brother, your sister, it should be one of the paramount goals that you want to make sure that every member of your family has come to know Jesus Christ as Savior and has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. That ought to be one of the most crucial elemental goals of any believer in the house. In the Old Testament, we hear about Joshua who said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In the New Testament, we hear of the jailer who, after he discovered that God had caused an earthquake to release Paul and Silas, that he said, what must I do to be saved? And not only him, but his entire household. This business of salvation is not only for you. If you are head of the house, it is a responsibility for you and your entire family. Because the last thing you will want to see is a child of yours to be lost eternally. And, you know, we take it for granted. But when you are absent from the Lord, when you are not saved, it is not only the eternal consequences of your life, but even right now, even right now, there are serious, serious consequences for not being saved. And so we want to recommend today that one of the things that we want to do as we reclaim, as we redeem, as we fight for our families to make sure that, yes, we have roof over their heads, Yes, we have food on the table. Yes, we have clothes on their backs. Yes, we make sure they don't end up in prison on drugs, on alcohol. Yes, we want to make sure that they're not some molester running around. Whatever it is that is decent and in order, we want to make sure our children are walking in the path of righteousness, but more importantly, that they come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And put it the other way around, really, it should be Savior and Lord. I was telling someone the other day that uh, one of the things that we need to start teaching in the church, really, is how people should become and make Jesus the Lord of their life. Because that's one area that we have fallen very short in. You know, we talk about people becoming saved, which is one thing. But what about becoming subject? to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. 
You say, what does that mean? Go back to the scripture. Go back to Matthew chapter 28. Jesus said what? Go and teach and preach and baptize. Make disciples. And after you have preached, after you have taught, after you baptize, then teach them again everything whatsoever I have commanded. So we got to do that. We got to do that. So the question becomes, how do we make sure that our family members, they all know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? We've talked about many, many things in the first two or so uh, steps in the process. We're now at the third step. And the third step says that we must ensure that every member of the household has accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and that they know and have embraced their spiritual gift. So the question becomes, how do we go about doing it? Number one, we have to pray for the salvation of our family members. We got to pray. We've got to make that a thing of prayer. You know what the Apostle Paul said? Paul said, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. As a matter of fact, let, let's go to it very, very quickly. Let's go to it very quickly, if you don't mind. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians, if we can get there, if we can get there. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And let's look at uh, beginning at verse 12. Listen to Paul. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and on your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all taking the, the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the, which is the word of God praying always, praying always, praying always Always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto uh, with all perseverance and supplication for all the sins and for me that the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel. We got to pray. We got to pray. Because as we said to you early on that this business of struggling fighting, battling for the home is crucial. When you look at somebody who is going to the electric chair, can you imagine when that individual was just born on the first day? I wonder if a mama knew that she was carrying in her womb someone who will kill people. I wonder what that pregnancy would have been if a mama knew that she was bringing into this world somebody who will do bad things to people. I don't know. I'm glad that Mary knew that who she was carrying in her womb would be the savior of the world. I'm glad that Hannah knew that she had prayed to God that the son that she was going to bring forth into this world, she was going to give him back to God. I'm glad that some mothers knew they prayed that God, what I'm carrying in my womb is going to make a difference in this world. 
We thank God for Susanna Wesley. As I shared with you, the husband was not always around. But Sister Wesley took seriously the responsibility of the head of the house to make sure that every child in that house knew about the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as she made sure they had breakfast, lunch, and dinner, she made sure they had clean clothes to wear. She made sure they knew the word of God because the word of God said it will not come back void. We got to pray. It takes prayer. It takes prayer. And I know, I know, because, you know, believe me, you know, uh, I'm not sitting here talking to you as though, you know, every home, there are homes that are perfect and there are homes that are, you know, not so perfect. No, as I said before, a long time ago, there are no perfect families. There are no perfect homes. Every home has their dirty clothes. They have their dirty, filthy clothes. They have dark places in the family. But for the grace of God. So we got to pray. We got to pray. And when I talk about, you know, bad things in every family, it's not necessarily murderers. But not every family, every member of the family is saved. And if your family, if every member is not saved, it's just as bad as having a murderer in, in the home. Because if you're not saved, it means you become a weapon. You become a tool for the enemy to use. You remember what happened to Judas? Judas left himself wide open. And the devil came in and used him to betray Jesus. So salvation is so important. So number one, we got to pray for the members of our family. Make that a subject, a priority. You say, well, I've been praying all these years and nothing has happened. That's all right. It is better for you to go to heaven and stand before God and say, God, I did it. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And the child did not come to you. That's not my responsibility. That's yours. Because you said no one comes to me except you draw them. We got to pray. We got to pray. We shared with you what happened to St. Monica. St. Monica was the mother of uh, St. Augustine. Who prayed for 30 years. Every day for 30 years. Every day she prayed for her son. The boy was rambunctious. He was doing bad things. Not necessarily, you know, killing and stealing. No, he was just an interesting little fella, womanizing and et cetera, et cetera. But she prayed, she prayed, she prayed, she prayed. And one day God heard her cry and saved him. And I say to you today, wherever you go to any seminary, Bible college, divinity school, wherever you go that has to do with serious religious studies, you will have to encounter St. Augustine. So prayer is number one. Number two, you must share scripture with the members of your family. You remember we shared with you out of Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter? Let's go to it again so that we are reminded what God said about sharing scripture with members of your family. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter again and see what the Bible says about sharing with the people in your family scriptures. It says here in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And then listen. And these words, the word of God, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way 
And when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as a frontlet between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on thy gates. God is serious. He doesn't want anybody to have an excuse to say, I didn't hear the word of God. I didn't see the word of God. No. Write it. Talk about it. When your child gets up in the morning, when your child is going to bed, give them the word of God. Let me say this to you. Sometimes when you go to the doctor, you are given medication. And some medications, and I believe it's most medications, you are not to take them on empty stomach. Anybody agree with me? If so, just raise your hand, do something, and let me know that you are with me. Some medications you are not to take on empty stomach. You are supposed to take it after you eat. Eat something with it. What am I saying to you? When it comes to this business of God, please don't ever show up without the word in you. When you go to prayer, there must be a word in you. When you go to worship, there must be a word in you. When you go to fast, there must be a word in you. When you go to meditate, there must be a word in you. Whatever you do that has to do with God, please take scripture with you because God said his word will not come back void. He said, put me in remembrance of my word. Got to share scripture with your family members. Write it, put it on the refrigerator. Write it, put it in the bathroom. Wherever you know that they will be able to see it, write it and put it there. Get your nice frame and put some powerful scriptures for your family to see. You know, you go to some of these children's room, they have pictures of Tupac and this person and that person, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> yeah, maybe, you know, you don't want to be so harsh to take it down. But put besides those pictures, scriptures also. Because the only thing those people have done, Tupac and Diggy D and the rest of them, the, the only thing they've done is that they've, they've, they've taken their talents, they've developed their talents, and they've made their talents available to the rest of the world. And every child of God should be able to do the same. Because all of us have gifts. We have talents. We have abilities. Take those talents. Take those abilities. Develop them and make them available to the rest of the world. So you got to share scripture with members of your family. You know, I'm thinking about the situation that happened with uh, David when David sinned against uh, Bathsheba and sent the husband to war and the rest of it. When you read Psalm number 51, and let, let's look at it very quickly. I want to show you something. Because in Psalm number 51, David shows us what we must do when we have sinned against God. I want to read that for you quickly. When you've done something that you know is not right toward God, listen, please, don't try to rationalize it. Don't try to say, well, Lord, you know, because my stomach was aching, that's why I drank all that liquor. God, you know I was so depressed since I took some drugs. Please. You know quite well your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you didn't know that, you know that now. You know that fornication and adultery and all those things are not 
godly. And when you say it's not godly, what do you mean? You're simply saying that you are now carrying the DNA of God in you. Can you imagine a God who's funny kitten and committed adultery? Can you imagine a God of the universe who's drunk up there or wherever he is? Can you imagine a God? No. God is holy. God is pure. God is light. God is wisdom. God is righteousness. So when we say that we are of God, we must be an example. So listen to this. This is David. He's done wrong. He comes to God. He's not trying to complain. He's not trying to argue. He's not trying to rationalize. He says what? He says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shipping in iniquity. That's the one time he tried to, you know, give a little excuse. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach, listen to this. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. One of the ways that you can use scripture to bring people to Christ is to teach them the ways of God. Don't, don't sit there, you know, don't do this and don't do that. Don't do, no, no, no. Just open the scripture and show them the ways of God. You don't have to get angry. You don't have to, you know, you know, leave the house in anger, rage. No, 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 no. When you sit down with your child, when you sit with the members of the family, what you want to do, do like David. David says, I will teach transgressors thy ways. And listen to what he said. When you teach transgressors thy ways, sinners shall be converted unto thee. You see, a lot of times we tell people, don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other. It's not this, it's not that, it's not the other. And that's all they know. Telling them what not to do will not do the trick. What will do the trick is the word of God. David here says, then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto me or unto you. What are we saying? The way that we can reclaim our homes, our children, and our families for God, you know, when you all have, uh, uh, we're coming up to what, Labor Day, uh, Memorial Day, whatever it is, Memorial, Supervisor says, a lot of families are going to come together. They will come together. I hope when they come together, there will be time to talk about, teach about, the ways of God. What is God saying about a family? What is God saying about relationships? What is God saying about forgiveness? What is God saying about holiness? What is God saying about the Holy Spirit? What is God saying about marriage? What is God saying about fornication and adultery? All of those. What is God saying? We must teach God's word. And then... The third thing that we must do to actually 
emphasize the importance of every member being saved, knowing their gifts and walking in the ways of God is that you, the teacher, you, the head of the family, you must be an example. You must be an example. You cannot say to your family member, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to do the other when you are not doing it. You've heard it said before that a picture is worth what? A thousand words. A picture is worth a thousand words. And so if the members of your family do not see you doing it, if they do not hear you saying it, if they see you becoming angry and you don't get angry, no, 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 no. What did Jesus say? Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to the scripture and see what Jesus said about this business. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, I want you to listen to this. Jesus said, beginning at verse 14, he says here, well, let's start at verse 13. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. I want you to hear this because he's not talking about salt as we know it. He's talking about oppression. Listen to this. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost his savor, his, that is not a gender neuter kind of a word. His has to do with oppression. Hmm? Wherewith shall it be salted? It is then for good for nothing but to be cast under the, and trodden under the foot of men. He says, Father, not only are you the salt of the earth, but you are the light of the world. A city that is held, a sit on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light their candles and put it under a bushel, but on the candlestick that everyone in the house we see the light. Then he goes on, he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. I remember 20 plus years ago, I went to a particular church and the first sermon that I preached on that Sunday was, let your light shine. And then I was in another place preaching about this same passage. And the Holy Spirit helped me understand what being the salt and the light were all about. Being the salt means having influence in your local community, in your home, with your family. You're the salt. And the light means having a global impact on the world. And uh, so I say to you, as we wrap this up today, and we're going to continue on Monday because on Monday you have to come because we're really going to delve into the whole business of why salvation is important. And not being saved affects you now and it affects your future. So you've got to come on Monday so we discuss the importance of salvation. But today, we want to just lay the foundation to realize that every member of your house should be saved, should know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And plus, they need to know their spiritual gift because our blessings are within the gift God has given to us. And the way we do it, we pray for our family. We share scripture with them and we are an example to our families. 
in Jesus' name. Amen.